Welcome to Introduction to Finance. In session three of Introduction to Finance, we're going to talk about working with financial statements, how these are an everyday part of your life. Uh, key ones are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. And these are important both in your personal life and in your professional life. Some key formulas you need to know um, in this uh, session. We're going to talk about key ratios. Um, we've had an income statement, we've had a balance sheet, we've had a cash flow. Now we can use these uh, financial statements to generate ratios and we can uh, see how our company is doing um, relative to other companies in our industry and across the world, actually. Um, so first we'll look at short-term solvency ratios. These are ratios I've used and I've highlighted these as being very important. Um, these are ones I've used across four different industries and we kept using them over and over again. So these are ones you want to memorize. First of all, short-term solvency ratios, you want to memorize the current ratio and the quick ratio. We'll also be looking for mnemonics so that we don't have to memorize anything. Are there little memory tricks we can use to uh, develop these ratios and kind of know them versus memorize them? In the long-term solvency category, we're going to look at debt-to-equity ratio, equity multiplier, and one of my favorites, long-term debt to equity. If we know the debt to equity ratio, we get three for one. Here's one of those mnemonics I was talking about. Um, I can get debt to equity, debt to assets, and equity uh, assets to equity. We can have three for one in that case of long-term solvency ratio. So again, memorize that one, you get three for one. Uh, in asset management ratios, we're going to look at inventory turnover ratio, very important ratio if you have lots of inventory. Uh, day sales and inventory is very important. Uh, for instance, if you're... Uh, the milk manager at the giant food store. You want to um, keep a key, uh, close watch on how many days sales and inventory. Also important in other industries, like uh, if you're selling Caterpillar tractors, how many days sales and inventory do I have? We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. Also an uh, asset management, days sales outstanding, sometimes called day sales and receivables. Uh, how long is it taking for my customers to pay me? Very critical ratio. Um, and the asset turnover ratio is very critical also, sales divided by total assets. Most of these ratios you can see come from your income statement and the balance sheet that we talked about in session two. Uh, the next category is profitability ratios. These are very, very important, and there are three key ones, um, net return on sales, net return on assets, and net return on equity. And if you look at those ratios, you can see that uh, it's net return on anything, basically, net income in the numerator and anything in the denominator. So there's another mnemonic for you to, uh, to know these ratios versus to memorize them. Um, finally, market value ratios are very, very important, used very heavily on Wall Street and inside the corporation. P.E. ratio you hear a lot um, on a lot of the financial news uh, channels. Uh, earnings per share, again, used heavily by every company reporting um, quarterly uh, earnings or net income. Market the book, how successfully have I increased our market value relative to our book value per share? And finally, a, new, a newer ratio, we're looking at enterprise value to EBITDA. Uh, we're looking at the value of the operating assets, less cash. We're taking away cash divided by cash flow, uh, a rough valuation of cash flow uh, known as EBITDA. We're going to look at these ratios uh, more closely uh, in this chapter. Our learning objectives are this. This is what you should get out of uh, session number three, cash flows and financial statements. What is the cash flow and why is it so important? And perhaps the, the statement of cash flows being the most important um, financial statement of all. Cash flow is king, especially in the small company. Uh, second learning objective, how do I standardize a financial statement so that I can compare a large company to a small company? Um, and companies in different industries so in di and in different currencies. How can I standardize my financial statements? We're going to look at that. Uh, third, learning objectives, as we mentioned earlier, ratio analysis. How can these ratios help us manage the company day in and day out? And how are we doing relative to our competitors and relative to others, uh, aspirin companies not even in our industry? The DuPont identity measures um, return on equity, and we should know this very critical ratio. Um, net return on equity. We're going to break that down into three pieces in the DuPont identity analysis. And finally, what do we use all this financial statement information for? All these ratios, how can they be used to measure performance and uh, to measure um, value of our acquisitions, uh, of our competitors, of our customers? Very important uh, session, so pay close attention to 
this session on using financial statement information. Uh, learning objectives one. Let's look at this cash flow identity. Remember from the last session, session two, that cash flow in equals cash flow out. Cash flow out from assets equal cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders. Uh, basically, that's what a company does. It uh, spends cash and it produces cash. If it doesn't have cash, it quickly becomes a failure. So we uh, acquire assets, we pay our bills, uh, we pay creditors, uh, we pay owners, and this is a use of cash. And hopefully we have uh, higher sources of cash, which will allow us to do all of that successfully. Uh, in general, uh, uses of cash are th activities that involve spending cash, and sources of cash generate cash. Uh, in general, we're going to look for uh, mnemonics again to understand what is a use of cash and what is a source of cash. Uh, this slide depicts it very well. A source of cash is a left side balance sheet item going down or a right side balance sheet item going up. For instance, if my current liabilities go up, that means I have bills that are unpaid. Uh, it's kind of a weird way of looking at it, but that's a source of cash. Uh, conversely, if my uh, left side balance sheet item goes down, if my inventory account goes down, that means I sold some inventory, and that's a source of cash. So left side balance sheet item down, right side balance sheet item up, those are sources of cash. Uses of cash are exactly the opposite. So if our right, left side balance sheet item goes up, um, we buy some inventory, that's a use of cash. So left side balance sheet item up, right side balance sheet item down, those are uses of cash. And that's an easy way to remember it, uh, looking at the balance sheet. So what is a statement of cash flows? It's a, a financial statement that summarizes sources and uses of cash over a specified period of time. And again, this is probably the most important one because again, at the end of the day, we have to be able to pay our employees. Uh, on uh, whether it be the, the end of the week on Friday or the end of the month. If, if uh, the payroll goes out once per month, we must have cash available to uh, pay this. So the CFO um, carefully watches a statement of cash flows all the time. Again, these are prepared at the end of the month with the income statement and the balance sheet. And if you look at it over the long term, you find that uh, statement of cash flows is just that. It's, it's the income statement plus an adjustment for depreciation plus any payout of dividends uh, and then chain, plus changes in the balance sheet. And that dictates the amount of cash uh, that goes up or down during the month in the firm. Uh, we break these today into three categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And uh, basically, we start again with last period's ending cash flow and look at uh, net income. So the first line that comes into the statement of cash flows is net income right off the income statement. So it's critical. It points out the criticality of having a successful uh, month or quarter or year in net income. Uh, if you have positive net income, everything kind of revolves around that. And that's a, a really good kickoff to your statement of cash flows. Uh, beyond that, we will add back depreciation expense, and then we'll look at changes in the balance sheet. As I said, if uh, receivables go up, as shown here, that's a left side balance sheet item. That's a use of cash. If uh, payables goes down, that's also a use of cash, uh, and so on down, down the line. And so we pull these numbers directly off the income statement and the balance sheet, and we end up with a net cash flow of 14. We started last year with 84, and that might be 84 million. You have to watch your units. And we added 14 this year to uh, show the end of the year cash flow at 98. Uh, very, very important financial statement, the most important financial statement. It's one you have to keep your eye on at all times as chief financial officer.